Hi again. Here we are to continue talking about our weather app in Xcode 7 using Swift 2. And I'm back in Xcode right now, and I'm at the app where we left off. And, you know, where we left off before, you know, it creates a weather object, but it doesn't actually load any data off the internet, right? So right in here, what we want to do is we want to start loading data off the internet. In the last video, I showed you the open weather map site and I showed you the API requests that we're going to use, okay? And it should produce something like this, okay? So it'll be JSON data and it'll just be text and it'll have all the weather and the temperature and the humidity and, you know, other stuff, the air pressure and clouds and all that other stuff. So um, why don't we just copy this URL? And if you forget, um, I got the URL from the API page. So I'm on API and then I chose current weather data, right? So I'm just on the first one here, current weather data. And then I'm going to use this first uh, URL right here, you know, where it's API weather name and then Q equals city name. And I'm actually just going to use their sample request right here for London. Okay, and if I click on that, you know, you can see that it puts the, the API or puts the address right here at the top. And I'm going to copy all of this. You can see it includes the API ID also. And we'll, we'll set up our own API ID key um, later and we'll add it. But for right now, we'll use their testing one, okay? So at this point, it'll only get the weather for, for London. But there's a few things that we need to do before we can um, fill that stuff in. So, so we'll copy this, right? And uh, we'll go back to Xcode. And what we want to do is we have our function here that says get weather for city. Okay. So um, I'm going to leave this stuff here, but we're actually going to have to remove this later. Okay. So remember that we're going to have to remove this. Okay. Um, but I'll just put it down here for now. You know, and actually we, maybe we'll even do this. We'll, we'll comment it out. So I'll just put a comment around it like this. And we'll use a block comment down here. And then this should now be taken out of the picture. So, so how are we going to get the weather for, um, or the weather data for, for, um, for our app? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to define a path. So the path is the, um, you know, the address where the weather data is. So I'm going to define a string. It'll be a fixed string. So I'll say path, you know, let path equal. I'll paste the address from Open Weather Map. And close off the string down here. Okay, so now that we've got the path, now we need to make a, um, a URL, okay? So we'll say let URL equals, and they have a special class, you know, um, called NSURL, which, you know, creates a special URL string, okay? So we'll say uh, NSURL equals path. And so I've, I've, what I've done here is I've created the, an NSURL, URL from a string, and then we're going to use this path string as our um, our string, okay? And then, now that we've got the, the NS URL, what we're going to do is we're going to create a session, okay? And the session is an NS URL session, okay? Um, and that is a, you know, a connection to the internet that goes out there and, you know, asks for data, exchanges data with a service on the internet. So um, so here's our session. We set the session up in this way. We're going to say nsurl session dot shared session. Okay, so we're going to get a reference to our session. And now actually we got to do a little bit more. Now we have to create a task for the session. Okay, so we're going to call it task. So I'll say let task equal. And what I want to do is I want to say session dot and there's a few answers here. What I want is I want data task um, with URL. And I want this last one here um, that has completion handler. Okay, and so the idea is we're going to pass a URL. And when the data task is complete, it's going to call the completion handler. And the completion handler is like a function. It's a block, that a block of code that is executed when, you know, this this task is completed, right? So when it completes, completion handler handles the completion, okay? So we'll choose this one here. It's URL, 
It's a data task with URL, and then it should say URL and completion handler, right? Okay, so we'll hit return there, and um, Xcode will write the whole thing here. So we're going to fill in the area. So we got to fill in this area here and this area here. So on the first one, our URL is URL because we've we've already defined that up here. Okay, and then the completion handler, right? And I'll select the code here. It's a function that that receives three parameters: NS data, NS URL response and ns error okay and then it returns nothing so in order to write this block what we'll do is we'll have xcode write it and you can do it easily like this select make sure this little block is selected there and then hit return and then xcode will kind of you know write that for us okay then it kind of rearranges the code here and puts in these curly brackets and stuff so we don't have to do that okay so now what we need to do is we need to define three variables and the first one is going to be type NS data. The second one will be type NS URL response. And the next one will be NS error. And so what we'll do is we'll select this. And you can just hit return. And then it will type NS data. So then I'm going to type data as my variable name. So what I'm saying is we've got a variable named data, colon, it's type NS data, optional, right? And then we'll go to this next one. And I'll hit return so it types the word. And then we'll call this one response. How about that? That's a pretty good name for that one, right? Because it's an NSL or NS URL response. Okay. And then we'll click on the last one, hit return, and we'll call this one error. So this is, you know, an error and it's type NS error. Okay. Now we can add our code in here. Okay. So what's going to happen is when our session loads the data from the internet, it's going to return that data here in this variable called data, okay? And it'll give us a response and an error message too, right? But we're really concerned like the information that we're getting from the weather station is going to be in data, right? So what we'll do is we'll go here and we'll say, um, how about just print data, okay? And that'll be our, our test. And if you want, you can put something else in here. Maybe we'll wrap that in a string and you know put some little arrows there right we got to put this in that little characters there so it prints the variable inside the string right so we'll just look for these errors in our output here okay oh i'm missing something what am i missing oh it says a insert an exclamation point so i guess um my um, my URL is an optional, right? So I, I, I need to unwrap it with the with the exclamation point. We could actually check that up here. If you option click on the URL, you can see, oh, it's got the question mark. So anyway, so there we go. We have that fixed, right? And now we got to do one more thing. When you've created the task, I mean, actually, we have a whole bunch more things to do, but uh, just for this part right here, we got one more step. The task doesn't do anything until we, we start it. So we have to say task.resume, okay? So this is going to um, gonna start the task. You know, we've created a session. We're going to attach a session to our task. I mean, to attach a task to our session, and then we'll start that task, okay? I know it says resume, but... This is really kind of like we're starting it up. Okay, we've set it up here, and now we're going to tell it to go and do its thing. Okay, so now um, we'll test our, our project here. And it builds in the simulator. And if you recall, we've got a little button, and when we, when we click the button, it calls on this get weather for city function. So I'll, I'll tap my button. And then I'll type in a city name. I'll type in um, Paris. And then I'll click OK. And then you can see here that I have a little problem, OK? And it says, you know, um, app transport security has blocked clear text HTTP, you know, resource load since it's insecure. And then it's well, here's our arrows. And then it says nil. So this is kind of a little thing with Xcode and, um, and 
you know, iOS and they, um, since we're, and it's also partly due to the way that Open Weather Map works. And when we use the free service on Open Weather Map, they only provide HTTP. They don't provide HTTPS, which is secure HTTP, right? And so by default, iOS doesn't accept these, um, these HTTP requests, right? But it will accept the HTTPS, okay? But since we can't use that one because we're not paying for the service, um, we have to use this HTTP method, right, which is insecure. And so it's saying like, hey, you know, App Transport Security has blocked this because we don't think it's safe, okay? So um, I'll show you how to fix this. And there's a couple things we can do. Um, you know, if you ran into a problem like this, you'd want to solve it on your own. So let me show you how, how I would do this. You know, I'm, I'm not familiar with this. It does say temporary exceptions can be configured via your app's info P list. And the info P list is right here. And this has a bunch of settings for your app. And, I, you know, I mean, I'm not quite sure how I would fix that from this, right? But it does say we can use that to solve the problem. So here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll figure it out. And I'm just going to copy this whole message right here. App Transport Security has blocked clear text, text HTTP, blah, 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 right? So I'll copy that. And then I'll go to my browser. And actually, you can see I already looked it up here, but uh, we'll look it up again. Um, so I'll paste it in there and hit return. And then you can see I've I've read a couple of the things here already. I kind of like this response here. It was easy to follow. So I'll click on this one. And then you can see this person had the same problem. And there's a couple answers here. And this is one of the answers. And it's, it, they point us to a couple websites where you can read more about this. And they give you a couple examples here. Now, this looks kind of ugly. It's a little hard to understand what's going on here. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down to the lazy option, which is a lot shorter. Um, <clears throat> this is also um, maybe not easy to follow, but let me try and explain, okay? So what's happening here is this info P list is an XML file. So really, it like in its raw form, this info P list right here that we're viewing really just looks like this, okay? But Apple, they give you this little tool to, to easily browse the, um, the, the data in the info P list, right? And so each one of these things here, each one of these rows, it begins with a key and then it has a value on the other side. And this is what it would look like normally. You'd say key and then you'd have the name of the key and then this is the type of the key and then this is the value, right? Okay, so uh, so let's see, how can, we, how can we add this? Well, if I click on this first one, you'll see there's a tiny plus button right there in a circle. And what I'll do is I'll click on that and it'll add a new key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the key name here and then paste it in there. And this little column right here for type says what type this is. And this, you know, right now it's type string but it should be type dictionary. So what we'll do is we'll click on the little arrows here and we'll set this to type dictionary. And a dictionary, um, you know, is like an array or an object in JavaScript and it can have multiple values inside it. So as soon as I switch this to dictionary, you can see there's a little triangle here. And when I click on that, I can open it up. And there's no values in it, but when I open it up, if I click on the plus button here, I can add a new value, right? And so what we want to do is we want to add this record here and then include this as one of its values. So I'll copy the name here, NS allow arbitrary loads, right? And that's the key and this is a type true which is really just a boolean, right? So it could be true or false. So what we'll do is we'll go in here and we'll set this to NS allow arbitrary loads and then the type here, like I said, it should be a boolean because it can it's saying true but you know, it can be either, tr that's, that's the Boolean value. It can either be true or false. So we'll choose that. And then it's a little confusing because it says no, but in, in the P list, we're going to set the, um, the Boolean type to either yes or no. Okay, so I'll set it to yes for true. Okay, so now that we've got that, we'll save it. Go back to our weather service, um, you know, file here. And then I'll test my project again, and I'll hit play. 
and I'll type in a city name. Let's type in Paris again. I like Paris. It's short and easy to type, right? And then I'll click OK. And then now you can see this time it loaded a bunch of data. Now this looks like like strange stuff here, but this is working, right? So we got everything. Really what it lo what we're seeing here is this is the raw data. This is like the, you know, byte you know that that the computer loaded you know it's the raw computer information right which is which is what we have here as NS data and what we're gonna do next is we're gonna convert that into you know um, you know the dictionary that we're gonna grab our, our real data from right so we'll convert that into text okay but anyway that that should get us started so once you're at this stage we know that you know we're we're actually loading data from the internet at this address we've created a session to load the data and a task to load the specific um, you information from this URL right and then we've started the task and it actually loads the data okay so anyway so I'll, I'll continue the rest in the next video but if you've if you've gotten over that problem there with the info P list and the security issue then you're in pretty good shape to continue everything else okay thanks for watching